Welcome back to week one of Search Engine Optimization with Victor Campos. So on our last video, I gave us a quick introduction to the class. We looked at the syllabus. Hopefully you've downloaded it, you've looked at it, and it's got valuable information. What you want to get now from Blackboard, from the week one module, is the client company profile. This document, which is a Word document, is our foundation to help us optimize our website, our online presence, most effectively. Now, a lot of people think SEO, search engine optimization, is simply developing, doing keyword research, and then putting them in your meta tags, and you're going to be number one. False. There's a lot more effort nowadays that you have to do in modern SEO. And I'm going to say right off the bat, SEO is complicated. Now, not necessarily hard, but SEO, I believe, is complicated. And something can be complicated and not necessarily hard or difficult. And by that, I mean something is hard when you have a lot of things to do and each step is very difficult and complicated. SEO has a lot of steps you need to accomplish and know about, but I don't believe those steps are that difficult. There's just a lot of steps. It's complicated. Unfortunately, also, you may follow everything we're, that I'm going to talk about in this class, and you still might not rank number one on the search engine. That's because many factors are in play. So modern SEO is complicated. Hopefully, then, we'll be able to succeed with what I'm going to talk about. And here's the very first step. I'm going to open up the client company profile document. As I said on the previous video, you do not need to turn in any homework. This, for example, is not something you're going to fill in and turn in to me. There is no homework. There are no grades or certificates in this course. You get out of it perhaps something more valuable, which is a website that ranks well instead of an A+. Before you can rank your website or attempt to rank your website well, you need to have various aspects, various basic foundational aspects of your company defined. So I'm going to go through this document and explain what I've got here and do it for a fictional company. So I would put here the name of my company. This is the company profile and my name. So let's say I'm doing a company called Victor's Bakery. This is a fictional company. Let's say I have a company on Main Street and I want to get people to come to the business to buy my baked goods. So I'm doing a company profile for Victor's Bakery. I'm the one preparing this company profile, so my name and then the date. September 6, 2016. There will always be a copy of it for the duration of the course of this document in Blackboard if you wish to download a fresh copy. I'm working on the original one, so if I, if I save this, it's going to save the, over the original. So if you want a non-edited version, log in back to Blackboard. And then the second page has all of these questions and sections that need to be filled in. So let's discuss these. Again, the point of this, we're not going to dive in directly to meta tags and such. That comes later. That comes with an understanding of your company. That's what this is for. Think about it in these terms. As I've said previously, not only do I teach at various colleges these concepts, I'm also part of various companies that we do these things for real clients. So over at my current company, PMD Interactive, we would get hired to do SEO for a company. We would get hired to make a website for a company. We would get hired to run social media for a company. So if we're going to succeed for that company, we need to have a great understanding of the company we were just hired for. So we would engage in building this company profile for that client. For yourself, you are your own client. So it still behooves you to know as much, as much about your own company as possible and have it defined tangibly instead of somewhere out in the ether, in your mind. And then when you need to know these things, you need to dredge up that information. Why not have it consolidated in a nice document here that you can access and have your, um, your subordinates or your 
uh, your coworkers uh, know about these things so that they can SEO optimize as well. Company name. What is the name of your company? Why did you choose that name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be Vic.co and will be pronounced Vic.co and it comes from my name. Okay, so if we were doing this for an assignment for you to turn in and if you simply typed Victor's Bakery, you would get a nice letter grade C on that. Eh, maybe a C minus, I'm being generous. Because that is not enough for me to understand about the company and it's not enough for you yourself to understand about the company. So I'm going to say something like Victor's Bakery is the company name. It comes from the name of the founder, the grandfather of the founder. So the story here is my grandfather inspired me to to bake he was quite adept and I carry out his legacy by naming my business after him simply stating the name of your business is a nice C minus grade this is more of an A grade because it explains a bit of the history and the meaning of the company these bits of information that you're putting together will help you in the long term. When we talk about biographical information of your company, when we have to fill in social media profile biographies, when we need to develop keyword strategies, these are the things that will help us. Notice I said the word legacy here. That could be a keyword that I'm going to use to help me get found. All of this information also creates a story that helps reach an audience. So simply writing the company name is not good enough. You have to be more in detail. And I've got a couple questions there that could help you fill that out. This can be edited at any point. And it should be reviewed periodically as it defines your company. So that defines your company name a bit. Let's look at the tagline. Think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines, such as, I'm loving it, or just do it. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement from your company if its name is not immediately understandable. For example, a great company for your great website. So that other fictional company, Vic.co, it would be Vic.co, a great company for your great website. The reason I'm saying this is if the name of your company is obvious, like Victor's Bakery, you can use the tagline in a more artistic or prosaic method. You can use that tagline as a sentence that helps build mind share, that helps build memorability for your company. If your business is more, it has a name like Vic.co, well, what? What does Vic.co do? That has no inherent meaning, Vic.co. So I have to use the tagline such as a great company for your great website. Since my example, Victor's Bakery, is pretty obvious, I could do here something like San Diego Bakery. Victor's Bakery, San Diego Bakery. That's a C minus result. Here's a better result. San Diego based bakery San Diego based bakery specializing in earth friendly fair with great ingredients might be a bit long sure but think about one sentence that defines your company I gave the examples of I'm loving it which should resonate as McDonald's and just do it which is obviously Nike but before the decades of fame that McDonald's and Nike have built I'm loving it has no meaning just do it has no meaning just do it could apply to a tax preparation business John's tax returns just do it obviously now just do it is so attached with Nike it doesn't make sense but this tagline is part of your collateral, your marketing collateral, 
to help you get found when people search, to help you build a presence online. And again, thinking in terms of search, people will be searching on Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever. They're going to be searching for keywords. And we'll have a lecture later on keyword strategies. But always think in terms of keywords. I have the keywords Diego, if I spelled it right. I have San Diego. I have bakery. I have earth friendly. I have great ingredients. I have these keywords that people could be searching for when they go on Google and searching for healthy baked goods or organic ingredients or local bakeries. When we have our activity about keywords, this will make more sense. But think in terms of creating a sentence that has some keywords. And especially think about a sentence that is obvious if the name of your business is not. Again, Vic.co, a great company for your great website. We can have our main tagline, and what we can do is have ancillary taglines that can be used for different purposes, for our marketing, but always related. We could have something like natural ingredients for a healthy snack. It doesn't hurt to think of three or five different taglines and uh, use them in different points in your marketing, focusing on the main concept. Maybe you change it eventually. It's a good idea to think of something here, which will help us when we optimize a little later. About us. Write a paragraph about your company. Who founded it? What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in this business? How will you make the company a success? These answers will help fill your biography on various sites. So we will see throughout the course that not only do we need to do things on your website, which is SEO, we'll also need to do things outside of your website, such as Twitter and your Facebook and your LinkedIn. Now, you do have a Twitter, don't you? You do have a Facebook and a company LinkedIn and all of that, don't you? Don't worry if you don't. Those are the things we'll be talking about in this course. Because modern search engine optimization is not just keywords and headings and alt text. That is the minimal. Nowadays, it's also SEM, search engine marketing. So we'll be touching on social media. We'll be touching on blogging and all of that good stuff. This about a statement then will help us when we get over to Twitter or Facebook or whatever to fill in biographical information that will help us get found. So I uh, probably won't fill in all of these, but I'll start us off with some ideas. And notice these are all of the classic who, what, when, where, why, how, etc. So if you can fill in as many of these, that'd be great. So for Victor's Bakery, uh, who founded it? The Campos Brothers founded Victor's Bakery. The business. A business that focuses on healthy, classic recipes. When did we get the idea for the business? Five years ago, after our grandfather passed. We founded the business in 2015. Why are you in this business? This is one of the harder ones to answer. I could easily say to sell baked goods. And that'll be fine, but really the best businesses out there succeed when they have a product that people want, which sounds obvious, but also a product that resonates with people, that people are interested in patronizing or purchasing. So the why here. We wanted to share the passion that was instilled in us by grandfather for baking and making people happy with treats. 
Yes, very artistic, prosaic, non, non-business. That is, not the classic stuffy marketing plan, perhaps. But here, helping us reach an audience that would care about our product. There's plenty of bakeries out there. That's why I'm saying previously that you may find it difficult to crack the first result because there is other competition that just has it locked down. And that's okay if you never reach first place or second place. Third place on page one is still invaluable. But here I'm trying to reach this audience that would really care about my baked goods as opposed to the competition. How will you make the business a success? Engaging in new marketing, which is social media, to reach an audience that would love our goods. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So the mission statement tells potential customers, why are you doing this? What is the mission? What is the, the goal of your business? I said here again, uh, it's a business, but the mission of my nonprofit organization is to raise awareness for XYZ. So this applies to every kind of business. So the, what's the mission statement for Victor's Bakery? To bring the healthiest versions of classic baked goodies to the masses. We want to be synonymous with healthy San Diego. This can be as long as you'd, as you'd like, as detailed as you'd like, and the point of this is to build the concepts of the keywords and such that you will be optimizing for later on. You can get ideas for what else to write by visiting the websites of various businesses that you, that you patronize. So if I'm really into Hallmark ornaments, I'll go over to the hallmark.com website, poke around on the about screen, maybe the investor relations screen, and look up what the mission statement of Hallmark is. Go look up the uh, mission statement of this college. Go to sdce.edu and at the footer of the page you will see our mission statement. Why are we in this business? Not exactly that we're a business at the college, but why are we in this for people? Why are you in business then yourself and what do you uh, offer people? Values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? And some examples, orderliness, teamwork, etc. You can go follow that link to find more examples of keywords, but with Victor's Bakery, we will say values like tradition, family. These are keywords to some degree that can also be used for optimization. Uh, so, tradition, family, uh, eco friendly, community driven. So this can be pretty open-ended. These are just some big keywords. What does your company believe in? Which of course means what do the people that run the business believe in? The point of that is to develop these core values that will then help you find the audience that also cares about these values. I'm this bakery and it's a very eco-friendly bakery. So I want to find customers that are also into eco-friendliness. Personality. Think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How could he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. This is to inform how you will behave, what you will write on your website, on social media, all of that. So. Uh, Victor's Bakery 
is friendly. We are community driven and open to all. This can be also pretty literal in that, well, you're going to be writing various copy. You're going to be writing text in a lot of places like uh, social media and your website and such. So how are you going to communicate? The communication will be colloquial. So spell check save me here. Colloquial. There we go. The communication will be collo colloquial and non-stuffy. We'll be using contractions and the like. The point of this is to figure out how you will communicate on social media eventually. If you look at the Twitter account of McDonald's as opposed to the Twitter account of Five Guys Burgers, you will most likely see different communication. If you look at the Twitter account of one business, like some realtor, as opposed to a daycare center, its communication style is also different. So that's why we're defining this, because I don't want a stiff and stuffy communication coming from a daycare center. That makes me believe perhaps the people that run it are stiff and harsh, and I don't want my kids to be in that environment. But that nice and friendly and jovial type of communication at a daycare center won't work at my tax prep office. I don't want the tax preparer to be making jokes and cracking memes on their Twitter because then uh, I don't feel my money is safe. And finally, fundamentals. What are the basic aspects of your business? List the company address, website, email, and any social media. So I would write, you know, the 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 address of the business, 123 Fake Street, San Diego, California, etc. So if you are running your business from your home, most likely then you've got a home address. If you're not comfortable putting your home address, that's perfectly fine. And I would be wary of doing it. I possibly would not put your home address if you've got a home address as a business. What I would do is get a P.O. box. I would go to the postal annex, the post office, um, mailboxes, etc., etc. And I would, um, I would look in investing and getting some sort of P.O. box. So P.O. box, whatever. That's my company address. Now, yes, that also sounds, or it looks a little bit, perhaps not as professional. So my local post office, and I think many post offices nowadays, let you write the address of uh, the location, and then your P.O. box number is, its, is, is the number. So I would go for that. So I'll write a note here, get a P.O. box. If you don't want to put your home address, then you'd want a phone number here, 619-555, whatever. And on that, I would say, get a Google Voice phone number. This is a free phone number that you get from Google. You can pick a new number, and therefore people will call there instead of your home number. I'm then going to uh, list our Twitter account. Let's say we've got twitter.com, Victor's Bakery. I don't think this exists. Don't go look for it and eventually want to set up Snapchat. I hear everyone's using it, so I should use it too, perhaps. The point of this fundamental information is because spam sites do not have this stuff. You will have real information that people can get in contact uh, with. So the search engines will see this is a legitimate business. It's not a fly-by-night organization. They are trustworthy. They have an address and a phone number and ways to get in contact. So the totality of this document and this lecture then is to define your company so that you can optimize for it in the future lectures that we have. To so come back for our future lectures. Again, this is not homework. Don't turn it in. 
but it's valuable for you, keep it and use it.